Hey, I'm Jake Kumar, the Bass Blaster, and this is your Seafoam Top 5 of the Week in Bass Fishing. Number 1 is Hamner Time! Hammer Time! Alright, Alabama's Justin Hamner's first Bassmaster win was the Bassmaster Classic. Huge congrats to him for winning the biggest thing in bass fishing and for mastering the changing conditions at Oklahoma's Grand Lake last weekend. He said going into the deal, he thought it would be another Domeki Rig scoping tournament, but once he got out there for practice, he realized it wouldn't be because there are way too many trash fish to weed through. In other words, he could not be efficient with that Domeki Rig and scoping thing. So he headed to the bank looking for the coldest water he could find. That was key. A lot of guys were looking for warmer water this time of year because, of course, those fish are moving up. But Justin pointed out that those fish also spread out and change every day, and he was looking for more consistent fish. He found them in brush piles, including in one case just two little sticks sticking up off the bottom where he caught two five pounders and he was fishing in shallower water than most guys at least the brush piles in shallower water four to eight feet most of his fish were caught on a jerk bait which he couldn't name for obvious reasons but if you know jerk baits you know what it is and he also weighed a few fish on a jig he also caught a bunch of fish on two more baits a hardcore minnow flat and a Yozuri 3DB MR crankbait, but those two baits didn't bring in any wayfish. He also said that fishing Yozuri T7 fluorocarbon was key around that brush. He led all three days, one with 58 pounds, three ounces, and that was about a three pound winning margin. If you're wondering about how he came out of nowhere to win a classic, well, take a look at his finishes on the Elite Series for about the last year. With one exception, he had all top 20s and top 10s, including a third at the Elite Series tournament just before the classic. I asked him where he's going now after his first win being a Bassmaster Classic win, and he said, To infinity and beyond! Ha <laughs> <laughs> that's right, man! Number two. Now, what were the top classic baits? Well, even though Justin and some other guys assumed it would be a Domeki Ford facing sonar tournament, that was not the case. Again, it was the trash fish, all the trash fish, what we call trash fish, swimming around, catfish, white bass, drum, that made that Domeki technique far less efficient and therefore it couldn't be used. So all these guys had to switch to fishing for shallower bass where they should be, namely brush piles, laydowns, rock transitions, docks, 45 degree banks, you name it. Now that doesn't mean they didn't use forward facing sonar. In fact, Justin said he used it to see which fish reacted to his jerk bait like a bass would. But very few of the guys were doing what I guess you could call now old school scoping. Check out these stats I compiled at the Classic. Day one, you can see that no one fished a Domeki rig. It was mostly jigs, crankbaits, and jerkbaits. Now on day two, the Domeki made an appearance, but it was still mostly jigs and crankbaits. Here's a quick rundown of what the rest of the top five fished. Wisconsin's Adam Rasmussen, who got to the Classic by winning the Wheeler Alabama Open last year, caught most of his fish on a jig and a spinnerbait. Cody Huff, who finished third, fished a Rapala OG tiny flat side crankbait and a jig. Jay Shakurit, another guy from Wisconsin, fished a jerkbait and a jig. And Lee Livesey got fifth, cranking a new six cents flat side and fishing a jig. So you can see it ain't all forward facing sonar and a Domeki rig or jig and minnow. The conditions and the fish determine what baits play. So hardly any jig head minnows at the classic, but at Redcrest, number three. Hey man, Washington DC is a clown show, but Alabama's DC is a one man bass show. Yeah, I'm talking about Dustin Connell. He won the Major League Fishing Red Crest Championship the weekend before the Classic, and it wasn't even close. Talking double digit pounds winning margin, just like he did two events before Red Crest at the Toledo Bend Bass Pro Tour stop. 
Now this year, Redcrest was on Lay Lake, Alabama, a lake he knows real well. Now sometimes that home lake or almost home lake knowledge bites a guy, but it didn't this time. And it didn't last Redcrest when Brian Thrift won on his home lake, Lake Norman, North Carolina. In 2021, Dustin won another Redcrest also in Alabama, Lake Eufaula. That makes him the only two-time Redcrest championship winner. Two times. Two times. Now in this one, he did fish the Domeki rig two of the four days. The first and fourth or last day using that new, not yet available Rapala Crush City Mooch Minnow. And the middle two days, he fished upriver at Lay with a spinnerbait and a scrounger head both tipped with a Rapala Crush City Freeloader, which is available. That Freeloader is accounted for three or four top wins already, and it just came out last year. That's pretty stout. Dustin's also neck and neck with his good buddy Jacob Wheeler for the most MLF wins, and now they're both sponsored by Rapala and both fishing the same baits against each other. Anyhow, I asked Dustin what would be cool after this win, and he thought a second, and he said, Metallica covering Sweet Home Alabama. I was like, let me make a phone call. Sweet home Alabama. Watch out for DC and Alabama, man. Number four. Did everybody fish the Domeki rig, jig and minnow, whatever you want to call it, at Lay Lake, the Red Crest Championship? No. It worked, but not way better than everything else. Lay Lake got some mud from rain before practice and during practice, and it was warming up. Now you know what that means, the fish were moving up too. Another way of saying it is that the fish were scattering out, meaning they're a lot easier to beam up when they're grouped up around bait. Anyhow, some guys did go all in with that rig, including Jacob Wheeler, who finished sixth, also fishing the Crush City Mooch Minnow. But most of the other top finishers were like Dustin, who fished a combination of the Domeki rig and some shallow water baits. Alton Jones Jr., who finished second, mostly chased him around with the beam. Michigan's Ron Nelson, who I believe got to Redcrest by being the MLF Invitational's Angler of the Year, fished a swim bait and a Z-Man jackhammer in current. Takahiro Omori, a former classic winner, of course, finished fourth fishing like he just loves to fish up shallow, in this case with also a Z-Man jackhammer. Jesse Wiggins finished fifth using his favorite rig of all time. Oh, shake your hand. Hey, thanks, Jesse. Not sure if he sleeps with a jackal flick-shaped worm on a shaky head under his pillow, but I wouldn't be surprised. So yeah, there was some Domeki rigging, but not only and maybe even not mostly. The conditions in the fish tell the tale, so... Don't worry. Number five. All right, what's the first top water of the year? A wake bait. Here's everything you need for that bite. A bone bomber long A and something you can cast it out there with and just wind it slowly back to you with. That's it. Here's a little more from MLF Bass Pro Tour Pro, Matt Steffen. Most people, when they think about a wake bait, think about like the old school bomber long A. Because of the plastic that this was made out of, it was kind of a high floating bait. So if you retrieved it at a slow pace, it stayed on the surface. And the idea behind a wake bait is to have your bait stay on the surface. So when you retrieve it, what it does is it creates a V pattern behind the bait. It's a wake bait. That's all you need and let's go fishing. That's all I got for you this week. Thank you for watching. Thank you, Seafoam. Go to BassBlaster.com or .rocks to sign up for the ultimate juice email, the Bass Blaster email. See you next week. God bless you.